what is up guys welcome to your 11th objective C tutorial and in this story we're going to be covering typecasting and also assignment operators but before that I want to talk to you guys about some things first of all this weekend I'm going to Myrtle Beach so if you're one of my hardcore subscribers looking forward to videos this weekend I'm not going to be posting any this weekend but come Monday or Tuesday have should have some new ones up and also people have been asking me why when I'm doing these tutorials am I looking to the left hand side of my screen or the right hand side I guess if you're watching it on video well actually I have a script um, in notepad or I guess it's called like text whatever it is on a Mac but it's my script of topics I follow so I don't forget to teach anything in the tutorial so that's why I'm looking to the left hand side of my screen right hand side if you're looking at it in the video so let's go ahead and get started in our tutorial that's my last tutorial I had left over I messed up had to start recording again I accidentally said a cuss word so I have to restart the first topic I want to go over is called typecasting and it's pretty much not pretty much what it is is converting one type of data to another so in the last tutorials we learned that you can only do certain kinds you have to first follow certain rules depending if your data is float or int but what if you want to follow the integer rules with your float or vice versa what you need to do is convert your float to an integer or your integer to your float so let's learn how to do that so say you have this float and you want to assign a number to it but you want to you have this integer and you want to convert it to a float for whatever reason what you need to do is before you type in your integer variable go ahead and type float in parentheses and then go ahead and write your integer like i3 or something so now i3 is equal to 10 an integer variable but if you put float in parentheses behind it it's going to take it and it's going to convert it to a floating point decimal so now whenever you divide by uh, you can divide by anything like 8 or something now since there's a float in the expression then the answer is going to be treated as float because remember whenever you take an integer divided by an integer it gives you an integer answer no matter what but if one of them is floats and that's why we did this converted that first one to a float then it's going to give you a um, float answer so let's log this down ns log percent f and let's go ahead and print that baby out and see what we get so build and run save all and we get unused variables in 1.25 so now unlike before where it's just an integer variable we get more specific more accurate data since we converted it to a float nice enough so pretty much anytime you want to convert a variable to another data type um, go ahead and put what data type you want to convert it to before it and again this doesn't work with anything you can't like convert characters and numbers you can't convert the letter B into an int but you know within reason so now that we have that part of the tutorial done the next thing I want to go over is well let me go another, over another example of this say you have a new int called Bucky and set it equal to um int and then you can type in a float just like this it doesn't have to be just variables you convert you can also convert whole numbers such as like 26.77 now we all know 26.77 is a float not an integer so what would happen when we typecast it or convert it that's all it means whenever I say say typecast I'm saying is the fancy words for convert what happens when we convert this to an integer well let's go ahead and log this and I'm gonna copy this because I'm lazy look at this why when I paste this does this move up not cool man not cool so print out I and print out Bucky and let's see what we get build and run save all and now we get an even 26 so again like I said not only can you convert variables you can also convert just regular numbers so that's a pretty neat trick so the last thing I want to go over with you guys is now that we have this variable Bucky and it's equal to 26 I might as well use this to go over assignment operators 
Now assignment operators are pretty much just a shorthanded technique of doing some pretty common programming techniques. So if we wanted to add 5 to the variable Bucky, here's what we know how to do so far. Bucky equals Bucky plus 5. So now what it does is take the value of Bucky, which is 26, add 5 to it, which makes it 31, and then assigns it to the variable Bucky again. So it pretty much takes Bucky, which was 26, and now makes it 31. So let me go ahead and print this out just so you guys believe me. Oh, nice. Build and run. Save all. And check this out. Now Bucky is equal to 31. Well, actually, check this out. People did this technique so often. Bucky equals Bucky plus 5. They're like, I wish I didn't have to play Bucky twice because programmers are really lazy. So they figured out a way to kind of create a shortcut to do this. And check it out. Anytime you want to add something to the variable and then change it itself, here's a nice little shorthand technique of doing this. Instead of Bucky equals Pucky, Bucky plus 5, put Bucky plus equals 5. And this is the exact same thing. It's just a shorthanded technique. It's called uh, using an assignment operator. And look at that. 31. This means the exact same thing. And if you're saying, all right, so can you only do that with addition or what? You can also do it with anything. For Let's go ahead and put multiplier right there. And now let's build it. Save. And now we get 130. So what this is equal to Bucky times equals 5 is Bucky equals Bucky, which is 26, times 5, which is 130. And you can also do this division, multiplication, anything you could usually do with a variable. So that's a nice little shorthanded technique, and we're going to be using that a lot in the future. Um, it saves you a bunch of time typing extra variables, and, well, that's pretty much all it does, save you time typing variables and now when you come across it in a program and you're like what kind of operation is times equals five I haven't seen that in math class well now you know so uh, that's all I got for you guys for this tutorial thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure to check out my blog so thank you again don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time